How to inject leg spider veins and blue veins by microsclerotherapy. Five tips for doctors and nurses. Are you a doctor or nurse wondering how to inject leg spider veins and blue veins? In this video, I will give you five tips on how to inject leg spider veins and blue veins by microsclerotherapy. Microsclerotherapy is without doubt the best treatment for small leg veins. I'm going to cover five ways you can make your injections much easier and much more accurate with fewer technical mistakes. That way, your microsclerotherapy will be way more effective and your patients will be much more satisfied with the results. My name is Dr. Haroon Gadraj, Director of the Vein Care Academy, helping doctors and nurses by providing online educational courses. If you are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links in the video description box below. So let's get started and stay to the end where I will share with you a resource I have put together with two of my vein specialist colleagues who give their own top tips and advice and I will share with you how you can get my free guide for doctors and nurses, how to inject leg spider veins and blue veins by microsclerotherapy. My first tip is to use magnification. Now it may seem obvious, but these leg veins are small. Leg spider veins are less than one millimeter in size and good lighting and magnification are really helpful with increasing injection accuracy. Magnification can be as inexpensive as a magnification lamp or as expensive as surgical loops and a headlamp. Choose something that suits your budget, but seriously consider magnification and good lighting. My second tip is to stretch the skin. Stretching the skin flat really does make a big difference when injecting leg spider veins. When you start out, ask an assistant to place both hands on the area with fingers spread and then ask him or her to gently stretch the skin flat. If working on your own, use your non-dominant, non-injecting hand to stretch the skin flat. Stretching the skin allows the needle to stay at the correct depth as you advance the needle into the spider veins. My next tip is to bend the needle. Most experts agree a slight bend on the needle allows you to get the depth of injection right when injecting leg spider veins, which are also known as telangiectasia by doctors and nurses. Remember, however, that blue veins, also known as reticular veins, are slightly deeper and you should bend the needle a little less or indeed keep the needle straight. My next tip is to watch the needle tip when you're injecting. You should always watch the needle tip when the sclerosant is being injected. Successful injection gives rise to blanching. This is an appearance that happens when clear sclerosin enters the vessel and displaces or clears the blood. Blanching is the hallmark of a successful injection. My next uh, tip is to stop injecting immediately if you get a bleb. A bleb indicates that the sclerosin is outside the vein. Stop immediately if you notice a bleb. If you don't, you run the risk of hurting your patient or, worse still, causing skin damage and ulceration. So there you are. Those are my five top tips for successful microsclerotherapy injection of leg spider veins and blue veins. Now remember, only suitably trained healthcare professionals should inject telangiectasias and reticular veins by microsclerotherapy. In the link now you can see my video where I ask two vascular colleagues to share their top tips and in the link below in the description box, you can download, I'll, I'll show you where you can download my free guide on how to inject leg spider veins and blue veins by microsclerotherapy. This guide for doctors and nurses is really a game changer. It will help take your microsclerotherapy technique to the next level. So get your free copy. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.